these things. They assess. We know that this guy is now uh, attempted to carjack an attempted murder, apparently, so that's what Ooh. the war it was for. Oh. You can see he's driving erratically. The 105 freeway, which we're talking about in the 710, well, the 105 runs uh, east-west we just, between Manhattan. Hold on, oh, hold on we, a second. we just watched a car go right through what seemed to be a brick building, and was that a cop car? Yeah. It looked it, like a cop car. It looked car. like a cop car that went right through. That was a Did, hairpin turn. Could we have somebody re-rack the tape down in video, and we will try to uh, bring you pictures of that. It happened in just a split second. It looked as if the black and white, which had been uh, in hot pursuit, uh, didn't negotiate the corner and went straight into a building. But the bad guy is still in front of the cops. Trace, hold on. Pat, when you see someone driving this ir uh, irrationally for this period of time and you already saw one car go through a wall chasing him, does that change the tactics? Yes, the landscape will just shift now. That was an extraordinary event there with that half in turn. That was a marked radio car that went through that wall. You'll find out that they're going to ramp up the is. intensity yeah, now and try probably to curtail him because he has demonstrated some extraordinarily dangerous driving tactics. What do you mean, try to curtail him? Uh, well, they, they may very well do, as you suggested earlier, when they start narrowing the scope, they may actually set up the equivalent of a roadblock yep. at, a, at a predetermined spot based on his driving and where it appears that he's heading. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, Pat, oh, oh, like he just hit it. He j apparently just hit, I'm guessing, a tack strip because he's, uh, his tire just went out, he's left front tire, rears. and he's onto the ribs. You can see the sparks well. flying out of that. When we get a shot of the other side of the car, we'll know if it definitely was a tack strip or not because well, the, the both have been blown out. Yeah. That's right. Trace, how long, once they hit the rims, have you seen these cars go? Sometimes they go as long as, uh, you know, we saw one just probably a month and a half ago go for almost 30 minutes on wow. the rim, so they can go for quite a while, especially if you have three good tires. We talked about direction here, and Edie was saying, where might he go? The 710, by the way, goes between Long Beach and Pasadena. It runs kind of east-west, north-south-ish, and the 105 freeway runs between Manhattan Beach all the way out to toward the Inland Empire, Whittier, and then it goes out toward the Riverside area, connects with Interstate 5. He's clearly staying in the neighborhoods here, and they know now this guy is a threat, so they're being very aggressive. You talked about how much time he has. Well, look, the police do have a lot of time, but if that was a police car that went in that building, they are not going to mess around little, uh, with this guy at all. Yeah, they want you know, him stopped, and they want him stopped now. They don't know if he's armed. They don't know anything about this guy's mental state right now, and that is critical when they approach this car. He's going to stop eventually, whether he runs out of gas or the tires just all go off the rims he's going to stop. The question now is how much threat is he posing to people in these neighborhoods and it clearly looks like he doesn't care about anybody but himself. Yeah. How much threat is he posing in the neighborhoods and how much risk is he posing to the officers involved and that's where they start getting very aggressive and, and you might see them actually the, uh, go up and bump the car and that, try and uh, as we've seen many times before that. roll that car over or at least stop the car. Right. Uh, the this is interesting. Will be used. We, that we that see that, okay, that the police have confirmed that, that he is not only uh, they were trying to serve a warrant for attempted murder, but this is a carjacking as well. We knew that there was a passenger in the car. We didn't know if that passenger was with this person, but apparently when they tried to serve the warrant, this guy ran out and uh, and carjacked somebody. And he's slowing down right now. We don't know why. He's in the uh, Alameda yeah, corridor. Yeah, we've seen him do that, and then they speed right back the up. The black and white uh, passenger door just opened up for a second. It looks as if we're about to come to a conclusion. Let's listen in. safer move if they try to we Tight alley here. Look at yeah. that. He's uh, going over and hitting trash, trash cans. It's a very narrow uh, alley littered with all kinds of stuff. And he's probably going we, 50 miles an hour. We do have word that the officer a, and the car, like the black and white, right that went into the building at, at high speed is okay. Ambulance, we were called there almost immediately, according to our Fox affiliate, following this action. We're cutting that tape so that you can see that. We should have that any moment. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Still going uh, at high rate, very Let's, high rates of speed, even through these uh, residential areas. Okay. We do have it. Let's We've go ahead and rewrite. Just about four minutes ago. On a split screen, let's try to get this in. The, uh, front left side of the, uh, Just a couple minutes ago, as Steve was saying, he's going to make this hairpin turn. The cop car is in watch back of him. Watch that car. Right into the building. Oh, my goodness. Can we re-rack that just on the air so folks can see it? We understand that the driver of that black here. and white. Hold yeah. on, let's go. He's trying to get he out. He's making a run up. for He's it. He's running. Let's listen to the uh, chopper pilot. I don't know if he, you know, knows anybody in this uh, in this neighborhood or this home, but you can see that night sun, that illumination. They're going to try to keep track of at least this one guy. We're going to stay with him. Stop 
And you're guy, watching a guy running, who running, we understand is a murder what? suspect right there. They, who's they, running they, from a warrant hands up, who could also be guilty down, of carjacking. The but there are two guys. Officer, right there, guns drawn. Two officers now from CHP, and they're going to be taking this guy into custody. And this pursuit is going to be code four, as they say, suspect in custody, no further action needed. But boy, what a dangerous pursuit. And again, thank goodness that that CHP officer that uh, ended up basically barreling his patrol car through the side of that local business. Thank goodness he is okay. And as far as we know, no other injuries as a result of this pursuit coming now safely to a conclusion here in South LA. What about the person who was in the car though? I wonder if we're yeah, gonna find out if that was a person who had been carjacked as the, uh, they suspect or if, uh, well, if, that, if that person's okay as well. Do we know for sure there was another person in the car? We heard the chopper pilot say that, but clearly only one person got out. Well, uh, earlier one of the was, yeah saw. one of the earlier things uh, there was somebody else in the car, but apparently uh, they're just after the one guy. They went after the guy who started running. Right. Hey Pat, how, what would uh, you have to have a lot of emotional control if you're a cop in pursuit of this guy, knowing what happened to uh, your fellow officer once you get him? You do, you do, Brian. But you know what? Every single day they got to do it. Every day. This is a clear case where this subject who's established himself as a bad guy based on the information we have, a carjacker, wanted on a murder warrant, positive, evidently positively identified to the point where a judge produced an instrument of a warrant. So that's probable cause. But here's a guy who took the, his fate in his own hands and at the end put his hands up. So he made the call. He made the call. Could have went a few different ways, Brian, at the end. That's a very dangerous situation. Well, once again, the officer they... heard there was danger, there was danger posed to civilians throughout that chase. That was a high-speed, dangerous pursuit. Patrick Brosnan, thanks for being there for us. We appreciate it. Also, a pleasure, guys. our thanks to Trace Gallagher, who is in Texas preparing for the liftoff yep. of the shuttle just about an hour from now. Thanks, that, Trace. Uh, that officer was on the ground with his flashlight looking under the other cars. Now, we knew that there had been a second person identified in the car. I wonder if, they've, if they're looking for... Uh, Perhaps he threw something out as soon as have. the... the uh, they're clearly looking.